G'day guys, welcome to the Iron Empire. This time, I drag out a couple of cars that have needed some much needed attention and I revive a classic. Before we get into it, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing um, so you don't miss out on any of the updates that are soon to come. Let's get into it. In Old Faithful, the Datsun. Just throwing a battery in it and I've put some uh, brake fluid or clutch fluid, I can't remember which side it was, um, and a bit of fuel down the carby. This is the first time I've fired this up for months, probably at least six months. So I'm gonna drag this out now. Hopefully it fires up. guys so i'm in the dado for the first time in a long time probably since the last time i done a video on this um if you haven't seen that video go back and check that out but i finally got it out i'm heading down to my cousin's place um danny he's gonna do uh some electrical repairs on it there's some long overdue um things required for this car there's some lights giving me issues and all the wiring's a little bit padded anyway, it's all factory. Uh, so I'm just running it down there and then I'm gonna get head back and get stuck into the next car. I'm also using my new GoPro for the very first time. So I'm hoping this all works out well. Um, leave a comment if you think that the footage um, or anything I'm trying to capture is any better than it was before. First drop for the day is done. Now I'm getting a lift back home with my mate Vince, and then they're gonna get stuck into this Dodge. Let's go. The pump's slowly picking up the fuel. It must have been bone dry for some reason, might have evaporated out. It's still kind of noisy, so I'm hoping that's picked up enough fuel to fire this thing up. There we go, it's quiet now. That's taken ages. You know, let's give this a go. <laughs> This has always been a peak when it's cold.
stay on the dodge. I ended up pulling the front uh, wheel off and pulling the drum off. I didn't record any of that because I literally done the exact same thing last time I drove the car. For some reason, I didn't pick up last time that the shoe had lifted off the actual, like the actual fiber had lifted off the brake shoe. Um, so that's what I think was catching. So I ended up snapping the broken, like the loose bit off and it seems to be okay. But then I went for a spin around the block and I've noticed the brakes sort of surge. They like go to the floor, next minute they lock up hard and they go to the floor. So it's just a little bit of boring sort of looking around the place. But I did find that the actual master cylinder, the bolts were like loose. The actual master cylinder itself was flopping around. So, but when I went over the door, I realized how annoying the door is because I try to open it, it won't open, it gets jammed all the time. So now I'm fiddling with the door latch. This is how old cars can get you so sidetracked. So now I'm pulling the door latch apart to try and get this working. The return spring for this little tongue is broken, so I've got a spare one up the block, but for now I'm just gonna pull the spring out of this one, hopefully get it working, because it does my head in. Reassess the brakes. If all going to plan, I'm just gonna literally run a chamois over it and then hit the road. Massive fail. Door latch, no good. Brakes, still no good. The thing's gone to the floor. They don't lock up anymore at least, but I've got no pedal at all, um, and it takes a long time to build up, so it's too unsafe to drive. So I canned this, took the fair lane out last night. There was a few cruisers on, there was a Chrysler cruise. Um, we had a good look around, it was a good night. But this morning, we hit up the um, swap meet down at Kilburn, and you gotta see what I got. Alright, so I ended up getting a full airlift kit. This was um, in some dude's uh, Chevy 57 uh, pickup and he basically brought it over or bought it locally and it was already airbagged. Too hard basket to get it through uh, SA Reg. So he pulled all the air gear out and flogged it off. So local swap meet, yeah, um, got the valve blocked. Two 480 via compressors, four bags, tank, all the wiring, and all the pipe work. Pretty much, probably 95% of what I need to bag another car. Uh, what that is, I don't know, but um, couldn't go past that. Got it for 400 bucks. So stoked on that. At least it was a bit of a win for the weekend. But as for now, we're gonna get to something more important. Now I'm on to finally showing you guys, I can't believe it's taken so long, my favorite car. All right, finally here it is. My 66 Dodge Phoenix. Uh, this was handed down to me from my dad uh, a few years ago and it's been sitting here with the motor out for at least four years and it's looking very sorry. So we're gonna um, do a bit of a tidy up around the place and drag this thing out today. Can't wait. It's like a barn finding my own house. I've parked this thing up to do the motor. The motor blew out to be a massive job. All the tires gone flat. All the satin black acrylic paint has gone through even though it's been under cover. I built this shelter for it and um, just the cold weather obviously has gotten to it. The surface rust. But uh, yeah, we're gonna revive this thing after I drag it out, give it a tidy up today. And um, yeah, it badly needs it.
too well. Alright, oh that one's a fail. Maybe the other side. You know, yeah, see. <laughs> You just have to trust me when I say this one's actually pumping up, believe it or not. All right, I bet I'm really looking good here. We just had to rock the car for about five minutes straight to get it out of its divots. But now we've moved it forward, so... Oh man, I'm filthy. Now that we've moved it forward, we're just basically moving the jack down, so we can only remove it like a meter, hits the jack, we've got a bit of a fail safe there. This is going to be the tricky bit, we're going to navigate it around this bend here, and through there, without clipping the rocks over here, and without cutting it too narrow, otherwise I'll uh, hit the wall, and we only got gravity, so we've got one chance. Okay. Alright, let go again. Kind of did work. Break, break, break! Fuck. They work, eh? Yeah, they work. I wouldn't trust it to go far, though. You rolled over the jack. Oh. That was all brakes. Woo! So you're on the brake now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That is not handy. Let's go! We're doing really good now, we're past the dodgy bit. Yeah, we're right now. <laughs> she loves it. Thank goodness for this old rim. Saving the day. It's out. Now, time to clean. Alrighty, so I've given this thing just a hose off at this stage, um, given it all a square down with car wash, and I haven't scrubbed anything yet, but I'm just starting off by doing sort of some of the spots like the bumper, the windows, the bits that make it look really ratty. So um, what I do with these windows when they're all hazed up and gunky in the corners, they take a lot more than just a chamois. Hit them with some car wash. And then quadruple zero, that's four zero uh, steel wall. This won't scratch your windows, but it will get everything off. You can pretty much feel when it's clean because um, it's not sort of gritty anymore. Uh, I use this on a lot of cars like the Fairlane, all around the little trims in here, around those. They always get gunked up and they never get fully properly cleaned. So giving this a good scrub down uh, makes a massive difference. Also, I've been using that on the stainless and it's been good. It hasn't done any damage. I'll show you around the other side here where I've just given this front one a real quick going over. You can see the difference. It might be a bit hard to see on camera, but that there versus that there. Uh, 
Um, so that gives you a good base, nice and clean. And then you can go over it with the polish and it's pretty much just as, um, they'll come up as shiny as you can be bothered rubbing. Now my main priority with this car is getting this engine bay all tidied up. There is a little bit of rust I have to deal with on the firewall, um, but mainly aside from that, it's um, getting it all prepped up. I'm gonna give it a coat of paint. I wanna paint up all the chassis rails and, and the front end of what, what can be seen from the top. I do wanna do a color change on this car. I wanna go back to original, which is white. I just need to work out what white it is and uh, get some color matched up. For the short term, the engine bay is gonna be painted white and the outside is going to be left the same which is going to be a bit ugly but it's the only way of getting my engine in and I want to do it sort of I don't want to pull the motor back out so that's the way I'm going to do that um, as you can see on the inside it's really really tidy in there um, this car miraculously hasn't really changed much since dad got this in the early, like in the mid 90s like the interior hasn't deteriorated at all it's always had that one tiny little crack on the dash there. The tops of the door trims have weathered over the years, but what I'm gonna try and do is repair those to try and keep them as original as possible. And just, I need to replace the, um, the wind lace around the door frames. Uh, aside from that, it just needs a good shampoo, the carpets and a good clean. I do love driving this car. Um, just the sitting position and the way it drives and steers and sounds has always been my favorite. So obviously a few of those things are gonna change. The sound is definitely gonna change. I'm assuming for the better. Um, sitting position still feels the same as it always has. Um, they're just such awesome comfy cars, these things. So yeah, that's pretty much gonna be it for this episode. Obviously I'm gonna have plenty in store for this thing. So there'll be lots of videos coming up with the engine bay prep, getting the motor back here, getting that in, um, getting it fired up. So all that you'll see in the coming months. Please like the video, leave a comment. I will get back to everyone as much as I can and I will see you all on the next episode. Cheers guys.